it should be sufficient now we listen to what sir has to say about the introduction the basic introduction of the patient not with the complaints complaints will come to the next point sir we are introducing the patient to the examiner or a fellow colleague what should be the way that a candidate should speak i think the age guides us to certain possibilities let's say i would say less than 20 years of age one should keep it in mind are we dealing with a congenital defect or in our country an infective lien people above the age of 45 or 50 we should think of degenerative conditions and above the age of 60 i think we must keep it in mind in addition to degenerative changes any neoplastic situation between the age of 20 and 45 roughly well i may not be very sure about the exact age brackets we have to keep things like infection injury after vigorous activities prolapsed disc and all this however we must also keep it in mind that above the age of 45 in the present era of availability of mri more than 35% of people will show you mri changes so we have essentially to go by looking at the patient the clinical findings a history and the changes which the body and the limbs are showing rather than to depend only on age so sir has narrowed down less than 20 to congenital lesions and infective lesions the next two decades may be combining infective lesions with injurious lesions with disc prolapse coming to more than 40 he says degenerative and with more than 60 degenerative plus neoplasms the theory today says that more than 40 suspect neoplasms but if it's more than 60 the inclination towards that is stronger that's what the latest literature says and definitely sir uh, there are some diseases which have sex predilection like ankylosing spondylitis is not exclusively seen in males but more common in males and similarly rheumatoid arthritis is more commonly seen in females if not exclusively seen in females yeah in ankylosing spondylitis i think for every 10 male patient which we see or every 10 patient which we see one of them would be a case of a, a lady mm-hmm. in ankylosing i think do keep in mind the family history even in rheumatoid disorders one has to keep in mind the family history and uh, about rheumatoid disorder i think all of us know it more common in ladies than in men so this is about age now we go to the occupation of the patient the occupation of a patient will tell us so much about the expectation the patient has from the doctor and it also means restoring to the activities which are required by the patient what are your views about occupation sir and what is the significance we always mention that 40 year lady housemaker homemaker or a young laborer as sir indicated if you are doing vigorous activities this prolapse can be one thing which can be related to occupation or your work related anything else you want to mention about this sir i think manual workers do have a chance of getting disc problems most of the disc prolapse are symptomatic disc prolapse occur because somebody is not accustomed to that activity and he subjects himself to an unaccustomed activity generally if you have been trained to do that activity over a period of years as a rule those activities do not disturb but if you are doing an unaccustomed activity then only the disc prolapse can take place uh, so we go to the next point sir chief complaints 
Chief complaint uh, should always start from the point where the patient started experiencing the first complaint or the first presentation. And it should always include from where to where the journey has been in the sequence of the presentation. So it should it can start like a line that a lady was apparently well six months back when she started experiencing. And then we can tell about the presentation. We talk about important thing that the most common presentation in orthopedics is pain. And if we have spine disorder, they are so commonly present to us with pain. Important points about pain, sir, what one candidate should keep in mind while presenting. And as an examiner, you are, want him to speak those points. It's very rare for people to have pain in the spine suddenly, but it does happen. And uh, I think two clinical diagnoses which we can put in, sudden pain, short duration pain, well, acute lumbago is just the clinical diagnosis or an acute disc prolapse. I would say these are the only two conditions where generally the patient would present suddenly with one, two or three days history. Otherwise, most of the pains in the spine are of long duration. Uh, a deformity of the spine of a long duration, the patient may come back to you not necessarily for deformity, he may start coming to you in a country like ours especially. A patient with a deformity may come to you just because the patient started feeling the pain. Similarly, infections in the spine, a slow process of pain over a few months and then suddenly due to some reason the pain increases, then only the patient comes to us. The degenerative changes in the spine do also cause low grade pain but lasting for months and probably years. Similarly, the pain caused by a neoplastic deposit, uh, I think one should also keep it in mind, after all, the commonest, the, the commonest malignant disease of the vertebral column is probably a secondary deposit. A secondary deposit would generally occur after the age of 50 or 55 years. This is a commonest malignant deposit in the vertebral column. However, if we talk of what is the commonest primary malignant tumor of the vertebral column, then one has to keep it in mind a myeloma. That is the commonest primary malignant tumor of the vertebral column. Now, we are just by chance on this statement, similarly, commonest benign tumor of the vertebral column is a hemangioma. Hemangiomas were not visible earlier than MRI because since the arrival of the MRI, it is such a common thing to be seen in the vertebral bodies that I think these people don't even write about it. The commonest benign tumor of the vertebral bodies is a hemangioma. Hemangiomas as a rule don't bother. But right, so myeloma so bothers, deposits bother. Three things he has mentioned, the metastasis in the vertebral body. So when you are preparing for the any MCQs and anybody can ask you these signs along with it, the classical uh, winking owl sign seen on an AP x-ray of the spine where one vertebra is destroyed or the classical blind back sign where both the pedicles are destroyed. So every vertebra has two eyes and one nose and if you have one pedicle gone, it's a winking out and when you have both the pedicles gone, it's a blind bat. Similarly, when they talk about the primary malignancy of spine, in fact, the primary malignant bone tumor overall is also multiple myeloma. But hemangiomas are the commonest benign lesions, which are not so commonly identified on x-rays, but remember the classical corduroy appearance or the vertical striations on a vertebral body 
or also called as a jail bar or jail house pattern of a vertebra which before the advent of mri ct scan had shown you polka dot sign the unequal sized dots and as sir said in today's world because we have mri being so commonly done that sometimes they don't even talk about an angioma because it's not of that significant proportion right sir yes to correct so pain is one thing that a patient presents with sir and what are the features of pain that a candidate should always address as sir has mentioned the first point it's an insidious onset and slow progression usually in spine except for lumbago or disc prolapse we are also supposed to talk about the site of the pain which can help us initially localize the disease in which area help us mm -hmm. and we can also talk about the nature of pain different diseases have different uh, natures of yeah. pain sir uh pain on activity generally pain on activity would tug would take place in see in a disc prolapse i would say pain exaggerated on activity can of course take place in any disease if it is a tumor if you are exaggerating if you are moving your spine you will get more pain infection in also will cause more pain but vague pains are generally signs of any defect in the spine that the vague pain but most of the pains increase on activity of the spine and i think a beautifully said blind vertebra one eyed vertebra when we are looking at these shadows of the pedicles and the spinous process one should also look at the symmetry if the distance between the nose and the eyes is equal it means the spine does not have a scoliosis we are looking at it coincidentally so we are also able to see is there diminution of the distance between the nose so called nose and the eyes that would reflect that there is some degree of scoliosis along with i think once you look at these vertebral shadows you can get probably a lot of information so it's not invisible it's unseen as i say this is a line from charles holmes so learn to spend time with things they become beautiful as they say a basic x-ray can tell you so much more if the vertebra has an element of rotation then obviously the distance which i have shown here a and b will not be equal normally they are equal this is the distance from the center of the vertebra along the line of nose to each eye so if you have a rotation because what is scoliosis is the lateral curvature of spine along with malalignment with rotational element and this rotation on an x-ray if properly taken will show you that the distance is not equal it is very important because many of times you are dealing with these deformities and you have to mention it when you are telling about the x-rays coming to uh, the national disease as we call it in uh, post graduate studies sir tuberculosis i think the examiner also wants to listen about the nocturnal increase in the pain or the diurnal variation in the country in your book i have read beautifully described that tb will have night cries mm -hmm. because of uh, the spasm of the muscle goes away and the bony ends which holds during the day time the muscles are relaxed and the damaged ends will rub causing a pain at the night mm, i i think that uh, so long as the disease is active most of these patients will have more increase of pain during night and as mentioned a few seconds ago when we are sleeping at least our muscles tend to relax the moment the muscles are relaxed the inflamed area 
probably they start getting rubbed against each other and then the pain increases. Nocturnal pain in infective limbs is uh, very well known, especially during to, in tuberculosis because you know there is not too much of pain in tuberculosis. There is pain, but not as high a pain as in a pyogenic infection. Pyogenic infection in the joints, bones, and even in the spine are very painful. And probably these patients are not able to even sleep because of the severe pain unless they are given some medicines to relieve the pain, relieve the pain and make them sleep. Whereas in tuberculosis, the pain is maximum on two conditions. One, if you are loading that infected area. Two, when you are sleeping, when the muscle spasm has been relieved or eliminated and then your infected bone, infected vertebrae, probably have micro motion at the site of the disease and then you get more pain. That is how we explain so-called nocturnal pain. So, sir just mentioned, if you are suspecting tuberculosis or cord spine or any area, there will be two causes of pain, two times you can have pain. One, you are trying to increase the activity, second, when you are sleeping. The second point that we want to talk about this, sir. It's one is the diurnal variation, second is the radiation of the pain, non radiation of the pain. It's more related to the disc prolapse we have. But in your experience, does tubercular presentation have a radiation? It can have radiation, but rarely. I would say rarely. Classically, Prolapsed disc is notorious for radiation pain to the lower limbs or even in the upper limbs for cervical spine discs. However, you can still have brachialgia, sciatica, even without the discs. They may 